Now, Egyptians made a journey across the Atlantic. How did they do that? Why did they do that? How do we know that they do it? They did it. Listen carefully. Do not confuse modern Egypt with ancient Egypt. These are two totally different worlds. This is Dr. Ivan Van Setima. He was an, an anthropologist from Guyana, a country in South America. In this lecture, he speaks about why the present Egypt is no longer Egyptians, meaning those who claim the country Egypt currently have little to no connection to the establishment of ancient Egyptians. Here's why. Hey, call me Louis. This is my spot. Louis spot. Immigrants. Although not so obvious, Dr. Setima starts by reminding us that people who occupy certain spaces does not necessarily mean that they are indigenous to that place. To prove his point, he gives an FYI, checking if anyone knew any of these prominent leaders from the past who did not come from the countries that they ruled. But you see, Egypt was so rich. The Africans were so extraordinary. And they were not superior people. You don't have inferior and superior people. This is what makes you superior and inferior. A certain vision of the world. A certain vision of yourself. Many of us have been destroyed. Reduced because we've been made to accept other people's vision of us. Yeah. You look at Hitler, Hitler was a bloody lunatic. He threw, threw him in prison in his early 20s. Hitler was walking about the prison like this. God bowed to him. That was an awesome person, boy. I mean, he was evil, but he was awesome. Napoleon too, Napoleon wasn't even a Frenchman. Most people don't know that. I am destined to glorify a people I hate. Could you imagine that, asked Napoleon? I read his diaries. I am destined to glorify a people I hate. And then the one thing I regret most in my life, this is Napoleon. The one thing I regret most in my life is that I did not make Toussaint. I did not make the black Toussaint governor of Haiti. I blame it on my black wife. Do you know Napoleon was married to Malata from the West Indies? Which we would call black hair. But do you know, she was the prejudiced one, not Napoleon. Napoleon wanted to make Toussaint governor of Haiti. His wife said, no, why would you give up territory to He's as crude as that. Museums. Van Setima speaks of evident objects that are hidden in private museums that will prove black presence in Egypt that will change the course of Egyptology if it were released to the public. So bear in mind, here I am responsible. I financed a telephone link up between Gamal Abdul Mokhtar, the Arab delegate at UNESCO, Sheikh Antony Op, the African delegate at UNESCO, myself, the representative of the British Museum, Garland Roberts, who found the pieces, and another gentleman who did translations from the French and British began. No, no, Van Sertima, we can't do that. <laughs> because if we start returning this item and that item to this and that museum, we'll have no museum. I said, sir, we're not asking you to return everything from your museums. You're well aware of the things that have been taken from other museums and other places. This is a very specific thing. It is of no value to you. You can't show it. What is the point? You can't show the, the splinters of the nose. Nobody's interested in splinters. Put the nose back on. <laughs> but the Arabs do. The Mokhtar, the Arab delegate, never said a bloody word. Boy, he don't want no nose interfering with the tourist trade in Egypt. He's as crude as that. Wars. Talking of war, this is what Vat Setima points about Egypt. Look why Egypt is no longer Egyptian. There was another people who built the pyramids. The Syrians attacked in 654 BC. The Persians attacked in 550 BC. The Greeks attacked in 320 BC. The Romans attacked just before and after Christ. The Arabs attacked 638 to 640 AD. That is why Egypt is no longer Egyptian. 
They have nothing to do with the building of the pyramids. Graves. Using archaeological examples, Dr. Setima tells of human fossils found in Egypt that shows the earliest human presence in Egypt were in fact Africans. If you go back in the graves, we have found hard evidence in the graves that the Egyptians were African. Let me listen to the anthropologists, all the great anthropologists. Because this is hidden, this doesn't come out in history books. The earliest human fossil found in Egypt was a skeleton of the Nazlet Kataman found near Tata, Egypt, which was dated 35,000 to 30,000 years before Christ. Regarding the racial affinity of the skeleton, Toma concludes strong alveolar prognathism combined with fossil prinasalis and an African skull is suggested of Negroid morphology. He proves it's a Negro. Then comes Wendorf, 1982 Wendorf the skeleton, discovered the skeleton at Wadi Kubaniya, located 10 to 15 kilometers north of Aswan in Egypt. This skeleton dated approximately 20,000 years before Christ. The wide nasal aperture, lower nasal margin morphology, presence of the sulcus prinasalis, wide interorbital distance and alveolar prognathism demonstrate affinities with broad African variants. All of the great anthropologists, archaeologists, Toma, Ferenbach, Wendorf, Stuart, Green, Armilagos, Wrightmore, Crawford, all of them prove that those early Egyptians in the pyramid age were African. That's the reason why Mokhtar, the Arab delegate, doesn't want a Negro nose on the Sphinx because they don't want to be laid back. The number seven. Like the rest of Africans, ancient Egyptians had a fixation about the number seven, as evident in a painting among the Ramesses and historical testimonials of the seven boats from Egypt in America. The Africans had a fixation about seven. They had a fixation about seven. They created the seven day week. There's no such thing, you know. The Africans noticed in Egypt that there are seven orifices in the human body. I can't mention all of them. There's seven primary colors in the rainbow. Violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red. There's seven notes in the musical scale. There's seven layers of skin. There's seven parts of the human brain. There's seven parts of the human eye. Seven is critical in the ages of man. Seven is the age of reason. 14, seven years later, puberty. 21, seven years later, maturation. Seven, 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 seven. That is why they created the seven deadly sins. Christ is in Egypt. He's not an Egyptian, he's a Jew. He was born in Jerusalem, but he went to Egypt. Read Hosea, out of Egypt shall I call my son. He was brought back to Jerusalem where he was crucified. Even the word Christ, he's not Jesus Christ, he's Jesus the Christ. Christ is an Egyptian word, K-R-S-T, Christ. K-R-S-T, the anointed one. That's how he became the Christ. Don't dismiss him, okay? I'm just pointing out the terms. Seven deadly sins, seven cardinal virtues, seven days of the week. That's the Africans created the seven day week. There's no such thing. Seven, 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 seven. We found in America not, oh, that the Egyptians made a trip to America. They sent out seven ships. He found it in a tomb in Egypt where the, these ships, seven ships are heading towards the west. Seven was everything to them. So they sent out seven ships. And we, ha we have it in this um, painting among the Ramesses around 1200 BC. These seven ships heading towards the west. Show them the seven braids that you can argue with. No sculpture in America has seven braids. Seven is everything to the African Egyptian. And we have evidence, not only they show their ships moving, but they show, it is shown among the Americans, the Popol for the Bible, the Kiche Maya. I have the Bible, the Kiche Maya, that shows blacks arrived in America in, before Christ. They destroyed so many books in America, but they didn't, enjoy, they didn't destroy all the Bibles of the Kiche Maya. So we have that reporting, these dark-skinned people arriving on seven ships. And so you get certain evidences like that. And I've checked out this. I have so many sources. Champollion the reporting the seven ships arriving from across the water. Champollion, Lefebvre, Sahagan, Sorensen, Sab Soderbergh, Rossellini, and above all, 
the Bible of the Kiche Maya. I've been through all these documents. They're finding these things and people are just pushing them aside, but not anymore. Language. More than 100 words that are identical between ancient Egypt and the rest of Africa. And we find intimate interconnections between the Egyptians and the rest of the Africans because people could say, okay, Egypt is separate. Today it is because the Egyptians are no longer Egyptians, just like the Americans are no longer Americans. You come into this room and it would be hard to find a Native American. You go to Egypt and it's hard to find an Egyptian. So be very careful about the past and the present. These words have changed dramatically. Shake Antony up and Theophilo Benga presented and it's in my new book. More than 100 words in Wolof, a West African language, the language of Sheikh Antony of more than 100 words which are identical in all their forms. That is utterly impossible. More than 100 Egyptian words in all their forms and variants found in Wolof, the Ops language. The African word for God, what is the word for God? Amen. You use it in your prayers. That's African. Amen. Jesus was in Egypt, you know. Out of Egypt shall I call my son. He wasn't an Egyptian, he was a Jew, but he went to Egypt. He was smuggled out by his uncle. Amon and Amen is Egyptian, and Am is West African, comes from that, and Nyam is East African. So you have Amen and Amon, Egyptian, and Am, West African, and Nyam, East African. Don't think everything is lost. There are all sorts of clues left in the past. And that if you learn certain things, you can pick them up. So they can't fool us anymore. Now, in conclusion, Dr. Ivan Van Setima gives a short explanation why the history of ancient Egypt, even though so crucial to black people, is often kept hidden. Now, if you really knew what the African was doing, most of us would not be behaving like inferiors. We'd have challenged the system long time ago. I was the first person to go to NASA to study blacks in space. You don't even know what, it's not only we don't know the history, we don't even know what's happening. Do you know the leading technical astronaut in our space team is a black man? Colonel Gregory, he's restructured the cockpit of our spaceships. They have found a map of South America in ancient Egypt. It was known as the Piri Reis map because of a Turkish admiral who found it there. And it has correct latitude and longitudinal coordinates. No European could have drawn such a map until after 1744 when the chronometer was invented. Yet the Africans had it before Christ. Do you know that the leading woman in our space team is a black woman, Dr. Christine Darden? She's reshaping our airplane so that in the, next, in the 21st century we've just entered certain airplanes, not just the... the, the the exotic airplanes would be able to fly faster than some. Do you know that? No. I had to go there. I nearly died at NASA because they invited me along with delegates from all over the world, China, Russia, Bears, to witness the blast off of the first black American in space. And I did not realize I have different ears. I grew up in a forest. I hear lights. I thought everybody heard lights. You have to hear differently in the forest. Because snakes, you can't see snakes. Snakes take on the color of trees and foliage. Therefore, you have to hear that when he starts. You have to hear that. Are you dead? I didn't know I had different ears. I thought everybody heard lights. I'm standing, these Russian and Chinese delegates, and I'm standing it's five and a half miles away from the spaceship. This is an awesome thing. It's bigger than a house. And we're going to send, shoot it off into space. And they start to count down. And they stop. Something wrong. And I start looking nervously. How could something be wrong? You know, a big thing like that with all this incredible thing. If it explodes, what would happen? Then they start to count down again. The third time they start to count down, you had this tremendous noise. And I fell over because my ears, blood came out of my ears because I hear differently from urban people. I grew up in a jungle, I hear different. And you would be amazed what blacks are doing in this country, totally unknown. Bell Labs employs more than a thousand black scientists. They created the, the transoceanic 
kids, they were major in that development. They reshaping our airplanes. They they remade the cockpit of the space shuttle. You never hear about that. If a black commits a crime, yeah, that's news. But when he does something extraordinary, oh my God, no, there's something mistake here. It's like the New York Times calling the black Val Herbe, so nobody would think it's the black. Now they're saying this Negro they found in Brazil came from Asia. Could you imagine that? She's going to take a ship all the way to the edge of South America and walk all the way up to Brazil because they know currents will take you off. Walk all the way to Brazil to drop her bloody skull. This is the state of the world we are in. Now, that sums it up for this video. What do you guys think? Share thoughts and opinions in the comment section below. Let's have a proper discussion about this without having me impose my opinions and ideas on this matter. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it so that the YouTube algorithm can know that this video was so much interesting and share it far wide to more avid viewers just like you. Subscribe and click the notification bell if this is your first time watching these videos and so that you can be notified as soon as we make a new upload on videos just like this. My name is Louis. Until next time.